We are so inattentive to the persons and the particulars around us. Socially speaking, uh, our media, our means of communication, have become so uh, abstract, so categorical, and so short. You know, I have to go on Facebook and, and you know, identify myself in such strange ways. And uh, even worse, we can reduce ourselves just to particular images um, of ourselves or particular comments. Our means of interaction are, are just so thin. Uh, we so uh, rarely these days actually have a, a friendship worthy of the name. Uh, that word itself has been, has been tremendously uh, thinned out. Uh, the capacity for conversation, eye contact. I mean, I, I don't know how well people used to maintain eye contact formally, but I've definitely experienced in the last 10 years, I think, a, a, a diminishment in uh, the ways in which young people can hold on to eye contact, uh, especially those who are more plugged into to these different modes of technology. So if that's the case, if in our society we are, are losing sight of the person, of each other, and just getting lost in our ideas and our abstractions, uh, our dialogue is, is really ideological. Our dialogue is really short, really thin, really sound bitey, really, you know, poster board and impersonal. Uh, if we want to recover prudence, we're going to have to meet each other face to face, recognize the complexities of a human life, and for a Catholic, I don't think that means for a moment abandoning the fullness of our Catholic faith. Not for a moment. But I think it does mean attending to the complexities of a human life and what it would take to get to that point where the fullness of Catholic faith is embodied in a person and in a society. Uh, one of my favorite things uh, that Pope Francis has said, and I imagine he's getting it uh, from, from somewhere else or just from an insight into the spiritual tradition, uh, because it's some sense so obvious when you think about it, is that true love is always contemplative. And I think that means that you will never love if you do not have this contemplative moment, this moment where you're looking, where you're attending to the person in front of you. If I think that true love just means, you know, dump trucking you with what I know, then I don't even see you. I just bury you in a pile of my thoughts and ideas. My thoughts and ideas might be right. I might have some darn good ideas. But if I have no care for you as an individual and how your path might be made to, to lead to embracing the fullness of truth, I do not love you in that moment. I just want to see my ideas affirmed. And, and that's not a love of you, that's ultimately a love of myself. Or, in some cases, an anxiety about myself. I may have ideas that ultimately I'm not really secure in. Because if I were, I'd have the flexibility to listen to another person speak differently. To think out how to get back to my truth from this person's point of view. It's really only when I'm anxious and insecure that I don't have the ability to listen to another person. To allow him or her to emerge. So again, I think that the true love, uh, true prudence is going to, to involve a social restoration of dialogue, of, of attention to the person.